Hi everybody, this is Matt. Welcome to Starlighting Projects. Today I'm going to be doing a review of a build I did of the Mobius Frankenstein model. I did a variety of modifications to this model. It's beautiful right out of the box, but I thought that there were some things that could be either imp improved or just added to, to to make the model a bit more lively. So I'm going to go through a list of the uh, six or seven different modifications I did, and I hope you enjoy the video. On this model, uh, I think Mobius did a pretty good job of capturing uh, Boris Karloff's facial features, but I think there was also a committee from Universal that wanted to tweak the design a little bit, and that resulted in a little bit of exaggeration of his features. I wanted to sort of strip some of that away, I, so I did some re-sculpting of, uh, of his hairline, took out some of the some of his chin, some some of the other stuff to just sort of uh, subdue the uh, features. The last thing that I did that I, I really wanted to get hold of was that I wanted uh, Boris Karloff's dimple to be uh, very evident in, uh, on this picture. A little background of that uh, that dimple uh, is that uh, Jack Pierce uh, back in the 1930s was Universal Studios uh, special effects makeup guru and he was the guy that was really responsible for the look of all the classic uh, classic monsters from the time. One of the things that he did was he convinced uh, Boris Karloff to take out bridge work in his lower jaw there so that his face would look a bit more cadaverous and so that's where the that's where the dimple came from if you're looking at, uh, at the old Frankenstein movie. A second change I wanted to do is I wanted to reposition his feet. Uh, as, as it came in the kit the uh, the, the, the feet were sort of uh, pointing straight forward and it didn't really match the box art picture or the publicity still that the model is based on. Some people referred to that as sort of a little Abner uh, look. Uh, so what I did was I just took the feet and cut the guide pins from them and then repositioned them so that they would point outward a little bit. I also bulked up his legs, you know, for the same, for the same reason. Uh, the, his legs look fairly skinny and I wanted to, to bulk them up and so I used uh, AV's epoxy sculpt basically to, to make them to make them a little bit fatter to make them bigger and more closely match uh, Karloff's legs. In the movie they for, for his costume they had used uh, asphalt uh, layers boots for him and the, the, the model sculpt really didn't reflect that so I, I did add a, a significant amount of uh, extra AV's epoxy again, basically to bulk that up, and make that look more like the uh, like the boots that he had on. Even though this is a static model, the base is big enough where I saw some opportunities to take advantage of the uh, the extra space that is provided in the model. All right, to facilitate moving him around, I put uh, really strong neodymium magnets in his in in the subfloor, in the base, and in, in 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 the bottom of his boots. I put four of them in there because I wanted it to be really strong, and I want to risk you know having the the monster fall over. Uh, I'll demonstrate you know being able to move him around again so I can move him to the front there's four magnets in each position so there's four magnets in his boots and in the subfloor in both the starting and the end positions here that I have that that gives me some some other opportunities to you know continually you know position him in different ways that uh, um, just to give it a bit more variety also while we're here and talking about magnets I put magnets in his hands and in his uh, in his arms basically so that they could reposition uh, in the starting position, uh, there you know he's he's holding onto the door and the wall, and in in other positions around the model, he might want to be uh, he might want to have his hands in different positions. And Karloff was really re expressive with his hands to, uh, to to you know to sell the to sell the monster. So uh, I thought it was important basically to give him some some different options for positioning the hands, and again, uh, very strong magnets to do that. One thing I wanted to improve upon a little bit was the uh, was the floor of the base. The the molding of the floorboards was a little bit over the top. I thought it was a little bit cartoonish looking, and so I decided I wanted to uh, clean that up a little bit. I went a route that I've I hadn't hadn't tried before, but I'm pretty happy with the results of it. What I did was I used a, a wood veneer stripping uh, to basically simulate the boards, and I the veneer comes like in a roll of tape. It's got an adhesive back on it. You basically place them down. Use a, a a, a conventional you know clothes iron basically to melt the glue and it holds it down once I had done that then I went through and I used a, uh, a chestnut stain on it to to get a nice dark colored board for it the the, the boards look work really well for me uh, they they follow the, the contours of the edges of the of the base very nicely I also wanted to go ahead and do the same thing to the edge of the door and give it some you know wood grain 
So I did the same thing to it. There's along the, the front edge and the top edge of the door, I basically also put that wood veneer on there, stained it, and you know, cu I cut slots into a little bit that matched the rest of the molding of the door. While we're talking about the door, I also thought that it was a, a, a it would be fairly easy and a fairly good idea basically to uh, to make the door movable. So I used a, a you know a pin basically a brass pin in the back of it um, to uh, so that I could make it make a hinge. So the door opens pretty much and goes all the way into an open position. So I can put the monster back into his uh, in, into the initial position wanted to describe some additional features to the floor to you. Um, I used a base wood plaque, again, uh, stained the same as the floorboards uh, on the kit. Um, came out a little bit darker, but I kind of like the contrast a little bit. That gave me uh, a fair amount of extra space to put the, uh, the animated nameplate that I created for it. When, and we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the electronics. I wanted to make, the, make it so that the base was uh, not so uh, cumbersome, and I wanted to make it a little bit portable so when I, if I take this to shows and such I can I can remove it and I, so I put four pins to uh, to locate the model base makes it really easy to, uh, to, to to put the take the model on take it back off again um, I also when I was working on the model a lot uh, the because the monster had magnets in his feet he sort of became cumbersome to just lay around things would you know tw tweezers pliers tools would start to attach to his feet and I wanted to get him to a, a place where I could set, set him off to the side all by himself so I made this nice little sub base or a mini base for him I used the same uh, wood veneer and I put it on a metal plate and it basically gives me the opportunity to put the put put the, the monster any place I want so now any part of the base for locating him is, uh, is pretty much fair game. Okay, a little bit about the uh, special effects that I built into there. I wanted to do some lighting things to it to make it a little bit more unique. The first thing that I did was I created this uh, uh, my custom nameplate. The, uh, the, the lettering on the nameplate is from the original Aurora box art. I used a, uh, a, a medium transfer process. Uh, I'll probably cover that in another video, but uh, basically I, it allows you to take an image and place it onto a piece of clear material and then you can backlight that. And Here's some of what that looks like backlit. Um, I have two versions of it. There's a very bright one that's just, you know, three, three LEDs backlighting it. The second one is uh, where I have some flickering LEDs that are basically going on and off. I chose those because I, I sort of wanted to have the, the look, this object is scratch built, and I wanted to have the look of a, of a, uh, uh, a film, a, a frame of film stuck in, a, in the film projector's gate. So this is uh, one of the things you see when you watch an old movie. Uh, one of the features you see is called gate weave, and this is basically where the film is sort of jittering around in the, uh, in the, in the gate. And so this, this effect sort of simulates that. Okay, I also wanted to add a couple footlights to this. Uh, the, the one that you're looking at right now is a, is a static position one. It doesn't move. It sits at the edge of the base. It cr basically has a flickering uh, candlelight uh, LED in it that points directly up at the, at the creature's face. Obviously, that provides us with the old creepy upward look. Okay, I added a second footlight. Second foot light is, 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 is mobile. This basically has the ability to pivot, similar to what I did on the Dracula kit, if you've seen that video. Uh, I basically put a, a, a steady white LED into this one, and this basically gives me, a, a, again, the ability to put an, a spotlight upward uh, on his face. And control for the electronics package is fairly straightforward. I used uh, two battery packs that I mounted on the rear wall. I have one for the uh, for the yellow LEDs and one for the white LEDs. I simply ran the uh, wires through a hole in the base and they run out to where they need to go towards the front of the model. I wanted to keep the electronics fairly simple so the battery packs also have power switches on them and you know again a fairly easy way to light up a model. 
Okay, to wrap up, I'm just going to go r real quickly around the model again. Uh, show some panoramas, and then we'll, as we go to fade out, then you'll see some uh, some action or some dark f uh, footage of the model in, in action. This is a, a great creepy classic model kit from Mobius. They're doing some really great stuff. I'm really happy that they're around. I hope you enjoyed the video and the tour. I really had a great time working on this model. It provides a lot of opportunities for for customization, and we're, it's a beautiful model. We're glad to have a, uh, a, a close to accurate representation of uh, Boris Karloff as Frankenstein from the 1931 film from Universal Pictures. Hope you enjoyed our video and I hope you have happy modeling.